Hi Builder Fam! Today I'd like to talk about multimeters. So welcome to the Renaissance Builder. Now multimeters is a pretty broad subject and honestly it's a field of landmines because everybody has their own opinion and everybody's opinion is somewhat justified in the little details that they're looking for. So to say that one meter is better than the rest of them is kind of shooting blanks because everybody has their specific needs and their specific desires and, and what they like. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Now, my opinion is just that. It's only my opinion. So what is my opinion worth at all? So whether I'm measuring something like this, or this, or things like this, I have indeed used quite a variety of voltage measuring devices. Now, that certainly doesn't make me the almighty authority on voltage measuring devices certainly far from it. I just want you to understand that I do have at least a little bit of experience using voltage measuring devices. And I have used voltage measuring devices, everything from little cheapies, little ones, not so little devices, somewhat more expensive devices, to shoot even the lab scopes that you would otherwise find in like scientific laboratories. I've used quite a few of them. And each and every one of them, I can tell you, certainly has their place. Now, there's always this one point that every multimeter argument always gets to. Is fluke really worth the money? Now, that one point is always incredibly relative because whether it is or is not worth the money you spend on it has a lot to do with how much money you're willing to spend in the first place. A lot of people will argue that fluke is not worth the money because of the features you get with the multimeter. And indeed, you can buy many other multimeters with the same features, sometimes better, for less money. But that's not really what Fluke's about. Now, mind you, I have here my very first digital multimeter. Before I had this multimeter, I was using the analog multimeters that I would get from Radio Shack. You know, the ones that you have to line up the mirror strip uh, so that you could make sure you were seeing the needle straight. So this was indeed my very first multimeter. It's a field piece. I was perfectly happy with this multimeter. It still works, believe it or not. As to how accurate it is, uh, well, I honestly don't know. I have it more for nostalgia than anything else. The rotary switch does indeed have issues. Sometimes it makes contact, sometimes it doesn't. I have to replace it, this here fluke, multimeter that cost me over $400. Why did I go and spend $400 on this here Fluke multimeter when I had this $150 multimeter here? Well, reliability. There comes a certain point in your career where you're going to tell yourself that, you know what, I want the Cadillac and you're gonna buy a Fluke. Not so much because you want all the features, but because you want the reliability. This switch, doesn't go bad nearly as fast as the switch does on this field piece. The build quality of a Fluke is indeed better than a field piece. I, I should give this caveat. The very latest field piece and whatever else multimeters I actually have not put my hands on, so the very latest ones could have improved their build quality significantly. But just from my experience, you are going to get better build quality out of a Fluke than you will a field piece. That being said, a lot of people are like, well, I just don't want to spend that kind of money. You don't have to. If you want a multimeter that's going to last you for years and be dependable and you want that fluke, get the small one. This Fluke 101 costs a hundred bucks. There is one major limitation to it. Whilst it does do AC and DC volts, full range, does the millivolts, it does the continuity, the diode testing, the ohms, it even reads capacitors and frequency which is good for modern variable frequency drive systems. The one thing it doesn't do is amps. I like these here small pocket multimeters. I don't want to carry around my big, multi big expensive multimeters all the time. I just don't want to do it. So I have a small fluke multimeter, but that's not even my favorite one. When it comes to small multimeters, this here unit is the, sh the it's, it's good stuff. This happens to be the Fieldpiece SPD-M1. 
And the reason I like it, even though the build quality is super cheap, I don't even think they make this one anymore. Um, the reason I like it is it is a true pocket multimeter. I can take all the voltage readings I want to. It is rated up to CAT2 600 volts. <sighs> You're probably pushing it working on 480 volt systems. Would I trust this to do fine critical measurements? No. Would I trust this to see if I have 480 or 208 versus 230? Yes. The thing is, this doesn't do capacitance. It does do non-contact voltage, but the best part is the leads, they wrap up in the back of it, and then you just stick it in your pocket or your bag or wherever. It's it's very nice for that. So that being said, there's, there's a variety of things, and if you're trying to shit on somebody else's brand, you're already in the wrong discussion. A lot of people like their field piece brands and there's nothing wrong with that. They are not bad devices. A lot of people like their Testo brands. A lot of people like their Milwaukee brands. And Testo and Milwaukee make great stuff. Shoot, there's even some Chinese knockoff flukes. Buddy of mine calls his a flounder. There's even some Chinese knockoff flukes that are good multimeters. They're good replacements for fluke, but they just still don't have the same reliability that you get with a flute. Yeah, I'm predicting you're eventually going to find yourself saying one day, I think I'm gonna get the fluke because hey, who doesn't like to drive the Cadillac? And you know, honestly, I don't even think it's really worth being that caught up in you have to have one particular kind of multimeter. I mean, what's wrong with saying I like this multimeter for one reason and I like this multimeter for another reason. Let's say I want the pocket multimeter that's just convenient to carry around when I just need to take general service oriented measurements and then have a, an advanced fluke multimeter when I want to take, when I want to do advanced electrical diagnosis. There's nothing wrong with that at all. There's actually quite a few varieties of multimeters. Take this one, for example. This is something that I intend to do a review on shortly, but this is a multimeter, pretty sure you can call it a multimeter, that connects to your phone. So it doesn't have a screen. It uses your phone or device for a screen. And all this is, is just the actual voltage measuring device and then a Bluetooth transmitter. I don't know whether this is worth it or not. I'm going to find out, but my point is maybe try not to be so stuck up on just one thing. There's lots of stuff out there. So with all that being said, I believe my final thoughts on the entire multimeter debate is going to be this. If you're trying to shit on somebody else's opinion about their multimeters, you're already wrong. Everybody has their favorite multimeters for a reason. And whilst some of them may be better in certain areas for certain reasons than others, Fluke isn't the best. Their price puts them in a completely different category. Field piece certainly isn't the best. Their price puts them in a lower category, but they come with caveats to say the, to add on to that. I'm not going to take my $10,000 Varus oscilloscope out to the field and use it like, you know, a pocket multimeter. If you're trying to hate on somebody else's opinion about their multimeters, you're already wrong. Your opinion matters to you relative to your experience. Realistically, that's how it should rest. I will say this, leads, that's really where you should be putting your money. Nice quality leads, maybe some with replaceable tips because you're going to blow those things up every once in a while. Yeah, leads, that's, that's where you really want to put it for sure. So I'm going to leave that with my final thoughts. Stop hating on other people's multimeters and their opinions about multimeters. Maybe listen to them and their experience and say, well, they liked that one for that reason. Maybe I should try that. I might like it too. Anyhow. Those are my thoughts. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. Make sure you hit that subscribe and bell icon for future videos. If you have any experiences or opinions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I always enjoy the opportunity to learn as well as the interaction with you guys. So till next time, guys, have a good day. Bye-bye. The edit says I need 10 more seconds of video. Oh, look at that. Pizza's here. <laughs>